<laughs> What's your name? Caitlin. Okay, how old are you, Caitlin? I'm nine. Nine. This is Mummy. Hello, Kathleen. This is Colton. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Gavin. What's your name? Gavin. How old are you, Gavin? I'm 13. And you are Colton's I'm nurse? I'm Emily. I'm his nurse. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's, let's, let's do this, everyone, because this is a very, very important story. They all are important stories, but this is a story I've been wanting you to hear for some time. So tell us, tell us what happened here. Well, Colton was a 13-year-old healthy, strong boy. He um, loved to do any sports. You've so, got some pictures, haven't you? Yes. He loved baseball, motorcycle, uh, anything that has to do with an adrenaline rush, uh, indoor skydiving, a little bit of behind the four-wheeler, snow skiing. He was a handsome kid. <laughs> Motocross he still is a handsome kid. Yeah. <laughs> Motocross was his passion. Uh, that was our family sport. We love, love motocross. Uh, he's 13 in this picture here. So this happened when he was 13. So there he is on his 13th birthday. His 13th birthday was almost a year before we had the HPV vaccine. Uh, riding. Wow. Good motocrosser. Seriously good. Thanks. So yeah, he was really awesome. So. What a shot. Um, he was going to go to scout camp. Uh, for scout camp, you have to have a physical. So we went to the doctor's office and the doctor says, hey, he's the age that uh, you should get the HPV vaccine. I said, uh, okay, how come? Well, uh, it can help prevent uh, cancer. Uh, and even if he's not promiscuous, he can still give it to his wife when he gets married. I said, oh, well, that sounds like a pretty good thing then. So he was administered the, the vaccine and um, on the third round, uh, two weeks after, he started having a really bad neck ache. Uh, I said, take some ibuprofen, go to school. Uh, the next day, he, he went motorcycle riding with his dad. Um, it was the last, well, here's one more picture, one of his, his best shots of him on the motorcycle. Strong kid. He loves showing off his muscles. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> like any strong boy working out and You're having so fun. Active. Very active. Yeah. Very active. Um, here's a that was right before school started, his eighth grade year. Uh, for Christmas he got a big boy bike, so he was upgrading to the adult size bike. He was better than his dad. On his little bike, he could outrun him. <laughs> uh, and then this is the last day he got to ride that big boy, boy bike. And that day he came home, he was pale, starting to feel nauseous, really sore neck. It didn't feel good. He went to bed and the next day I checked on him. He still didn't want to get out of bed. I just thought, man, you're just really weak and exhausted. And uh, that evening, uh, when he sat up to take a, a drink of water, he said, Mom, can you, can you give that to me in my left hand? I can't use my right arm very good. It's, I, it's weak. And he tried to lift up, and all of a sudden he just flopped back. And his, his head just hit the pillow, and I went, Colton, are you going paralyzed? Like, in my head, I, I don't know if I said it out loud because I didn't want to scare him, uh, but I just thought, do you have spinal meningitis? You know, it was my first, like, really bad fear, but it was so late that evening that we didn't, we didn't go to Instacare right away. Um, we, we waited till the next morning, and I could have lost him that night. So my husband took him in, to Instacare, Monday morning, February 17th, 2014, holding his head for him because he couldn't get out of bed and he couldn't use his right arm. They immediately took him down to Primary Children's Hospital in Salt Lake, which is about an hour away by ambulance from our home. And they did, you know, started doing testing, spinal tap, MRI, 
The MRI showed inflammation in his spinal cord in his neck from C1 to T12. Uh, original diagnosis was transverse myelitis, acute longitudinal transverse myelitis. When the doctor came out and asked me questions, they said, well, has, any, has he been sick? Has he had any changes or anything? I said, no, he hasn't been sick. It said he's had a sore neck for the last couple days. Well, what about a couple weeks ago? Or, you know, I mean, they kind of were backtracking. And I says, well, he had the HPV vaccine on February 1st. And they went, oh, well, um, we'll be reporting that to VARS. And, and they did. Um, and, and then they just kind of kept going on and, and they kind of So how long after that, that vaccine are you in this hospital now? What's the February 17th was the first day he entered Primary Children's, which he stayed 88 days. 88 days? Yeah. He was, he was pretty much completely paralyzed. I don't know if you want to see this picture, but this is the inflammation in his spinal cord. This is supposed to be dark all through here. That's his neck region. This is his spinal cord. This white line all the way down the middle is the inflammation in his spinal cord uh, that is causing his paralysis. So on day one, his, his full neck and his whole right arm was completely paralyzed uh, and the left arm was starting to go paralyzed. Uh, they were really nice. They said, hey, you know, he's going to start not being able to breathe pretty soon. It might be better if we intubate him. So this was immediately after they intubated him that first night. Uh, because the, pr the paralysis just went down, down, down after the first four to five days. Uh, where he was completely paralyzed from the neck down, had no movement at all. Little did we know we were going to lose all form of communication with him because he couldn't talk. Once you're intubated, you can't speak. So we were using the thumbs up, the thumbs down to say, are you okay, yes and no questions. Uh, but by the end of that week, he couldn't even move his thumb. So then we're like, now you have to use your eyebrows to say yes or no to us. Uh, the next. The next thing they also decided to do was plasmapheresis, which is they put a port in their jugular and they take your, your blood out and they put new al albumin in it. It's basically dialysis of your plasma. And it's just sad to see your kid so... So he's 13 years old. 13 years old. Yeah. Go, he went, he didn't look very good. And they'd come in to do um, therapy, you know, daily, trying to get him mobile because when you're completely paralyzed, you can get pneumonia easy. When you're ventilated, you know, there's a lot of problems that can arise with um, infections and whatnot. So, uh, we couldn't keep him very comfortable while he was in the hospital. So he was always being positioned with frog legs and going back and forth with, uh, you know, movements. We'd try to massage his legs. We'd um, lotion him and try to ke keep him comfortable. His uh, temperature would rise and fall, you know. I mean, he'd, he'd go from hot to cold uh, easy. So therefore he had <laughs> lots of different uh, he had gel pillows to hold him in, in the bed, but he also had uh, ice packs or hot packs and he'd go back and forth because of his temperature being not regulated very well. He's smiling in this photograph. <laughs> Colton! <laughs> so, always smiling. The one thing about Colton is he does always smile and, you know, he's, he's an awesome kid that way. <laughs> he doesn't complain. He... You're good, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so this noise that everybody's hearing right now is, is breathing up noises. Do you want to talk about that? Well, 
kind of does get a little annoying in a quiet room. <laughs> no <laughs> one's annoyed. Everybody's just desperately, yeah. desperately sad for you. That's yeah, it so does sorry. suck. Cause... So tell us from your point of view. Well, it does suck like not being able to play sports anymore. Because um, I did, I did do a lot of sports. And it was my favorite. You are awesome sportsman, you've just seen yeah. photos of you. Yeah, now I have to sit on the sideline, just watch everybody. <laughs> but getting used to it, so it's not as bad anymore. But I do do a lot of fun things now, like my razor, I've gone skiing, camping a lot, so it's always been fun. So is, here's a picture of him in his razor. So this is recent. Last, yeah, about yeah, last March. Yeah. But ago. you have to have this breathing apparatus with you the whole time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, it's about 15 pounds. So I always have to have someone with me to carry it to get around. He, it's a literal ball and chain for him because his right arm is completely paralyzed. His left arm only has minimal function now, and. He's lucky he's regained his legs and his core strength. Uh, he was a complete quad for a whole month and a half. Uh, we've done some very rig rigorous um, therapy in order for him to be where he is today. Uh, we would travel 100, 100 miles round trip a day after he'd go to school to do a couple hours of therapy for a year and a half, three to four days a week so that he could get his legs back. So the people who gave you this vaccine, where are they now? What do they say? Um, our, our doctor is actually, he's the doctor that delivered him. Um, I, he's just a family practice doctor. I, I, still, I still like him. I, I am upset that he still wants to give the vaccine, but you know, he, he will not give it to boys anymore. Uh, he's cautioning on girls uh, to give it to girls, but it it's hard when you... So he's not gonna give the HPV vaccine to boys? Correct. Colton, do you just realize how many boys yeah, that you just Yeah, that's good he's at least not doing it to boys, but lots of girls can still get hurt. I think, I think the thing that I was so naive to what, whatever the medical doctor says, man, if the doctor's going to say something, he's the one that went to school, he knows the best, so of course you're going to do what they recommend, and and so that's what I did, you know, I mean, he's he's been his doctor his whole life, he's been my doctor since I was a teenager, and I, I still trust him in, in a lot of other things now when it comes to the vaccinations. Um, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> they continue to, his other doctors continue to ask, uh, does he need a flu vaccine? I'm like, absolutely not. Well, why not? I says, well, obviously. I mean, surely this, they're, not, they're not pushing any more vaccines on him. Oh, they still try to push. I, I have to tell them every time I go in, document that I don't want to be asked because I might shred your head. <laughs> so, Colton. What's happened to you is, is criminal, basically. It's criminal. Yeah, it is. What's a day like for you? What's, what's your, do you, could you go to school? Yeah, I go to school. Look at that fly up in. An annoying fly, it was over with us yeah. for ages. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do go to school full time now, but I have to have a lot of assistance to get around a little bit. Um, a lot of bit. Are your friends at school supportive yeah. of what's happened? Yeah. Very. Yeah, I've... Some of my best friends have still been with me by my side the whole time. And I do I do appreciate it. Um, Is there anything that we can do for Colton? I mean, we want to help. We want to do anything that we can. Is there any... Is there... Is, is, this, is this going to get better? Do we... No? The, he's at his new normal, as far as we can tell. Um, we've tried to do the, a diaphragm pacer, where they insert um, a diaphragm and electrically stimulate the diaphragm. However, his diaphragm has atrophied 
too much. It, it wouldn't accept stimulation, so um, he pretty much gets to be on this the whole time. Um, People are asking if you're in pain still now? Not really anymore, no. No brain, um, no pain. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I was in a little bit of pain though in the hospital and for a little while after that, but it's starting to get a little better now. So when you couldn't speak, do you remember what that felt like? It was hard to communicate with people. Couldn't, couldn't tell them what, how you felt exactly. Just yes or no questions. He used his eyebrows really good though. He scrumped them. Yeah. And raised them. And... What does your headband say? <laughs> Caught, Caught staring. you staring. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's funny. People's reactions. And they know they've been staring. Funny. We we keep a sense of humor with our lifestyle, I guess. <laughs> That's how we get through day to day, and um, you know we don't we understand people are curious, and it's natural. I mean, it, so someone's different or looks different, you kind of look, but so this is kind of just a a joke. Hit the jokes back on you, you know. We caught you staring at us. <laughs> what about anger? I haven't really burst out that much. <laughs> I kind of just keep it to myself. I don't. I don't really like to complain. So. There's a lot of people on here that are very angry about what's happened to you. Yeah. Very I'm, angry. Yeah, I'm angry that they're still giving out vaccine. They don't care that people are getting hurt. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a joke. What's yeah. your message? Both of you, all of you, what's your message to parents? Well, you gotta do your research. Like, you don't, you can't just trust a doctor anymore. You have to do your own ways to find out what's best for you. Yeah. And it must have been hard on the dad. Yeah. Oh yeah. I bet he's angry. Yeah, yeah. very angry. It's 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 affected him greatly. You know, he's he's his writing buddy. He's his. Um, hunting buddy. Yeah. He works out in the garage with him. We mowed our lawn. Gavin gets to pick up any chores now that Colton used to do. And, and it's hard it's on all siblings on him. as well. We know yeah. that. We speak to the siblings a lot and it's it's a very painful thing to watch yeah. your parents sad and your, what's happened to your brother. It's not okay. So you're allowed to be angry too. Yeah. Well, they've had both of my kids, they've had to grow up a lot the last two years without mom around. I've had to be with him. Not that I don't mind being with him, it's just that then I'm not with my other two. So it's it's a hard balancing act, especially when we were in the hospital and I had to balance being with him and having my other two kids still going to school. And, and at night, you know, um, He's still kind of like having a baby, you know? You have to wake up to the monitors and um, the alarms that go off, or if he needs to go to the bathroom, he can't just run out of the bed by himself. He has to be, a ventilator has to go with him. He has to have his cervical collar on in order to, to go to and from the bathroom. Um, it, it's gotten a lot better now, um, but before, when he first got out of the hospital, there was no, he wouldn't do it by himself. Now, now he will do it a little bit by himself. I can show you a picture of him. I cannot tell you how many people are coming forward to us. I mean, our story, Vax, is about the MMR. And since we put Vax out, Gardasil is, can I show you this? Possibly, would you say? But Gardasil and Detap. The worst. This is a little embarrassing for him to, to show this, but just so you can see what he looks like when he, he is balancing his head and trying to make it not fall forward because he is quite paralyzed in his neck. You can see the distortion in his shoulders and this is him trying to roll out of bed by himself and then disconnect so he can move around for a minute free of the ball and chain. And you're smiling again, Colton. Yeah. This was actually taken at 3 in the morning, and he's always smiling. 
he's just a good you kid. Know, <laughs> you're a real example to all of us. You really are truly an example. Life gives I'm us so all proud challenges. Of you. We're all so <laughs> proud of you. Really, really, truly proud of yeah. you. All of you. We know all your pain. We he, love you guys. He, he loves to stay active. We just bought him a recumbent bike that we've modified all to the left hand so he can maintain some function on his own. And he cruises in this thing. It's pretty awesome. Amazing. So, no matter what your your element in life, you know our our saying is to just keep on keeping on.